morning. <clears throat> First, I want to express my sadness to the McKeever family. Criminal law is saturated in tragedy, and the loss of a loved one is the deepest kind of tragedy. All of us who do this work bear the burden of always seeing with our eyes and our heart what this loss means to so many people. I know that the pain suffered by the McKeever family will never go away. Second, I also want to say something about and to our staff at the Hennepin County Attorney's Office. We have the most experienced, dedicated, professional team of prosecutors, victim advocates, and other staff in the state of Minnesota. I have worked with them for many years and have gotten to see them and know them much better in the short time I've held this office. I have supreme confidence in them and their decision making. They care deeply about public safety in Hennepin County, and they take their roles extraordinarily seriously. I am proud to work with them as they do very difficult jobs. Part of what makes this job so hard as a prosecutor is that no matter what we do, we will never bring a loved one back to life or erase the trauma that comes with a crime like this one. Our goal must be, going forward, not to compound the tragedy that has already happened. That means doing what is necessary to prevent future violence while respecting the human dignity of everyone who's involved. The sad reality is that so many cases that come into the legal system are absolutely devastating. It is one of the reasons being a prosecutor is so difficult because you have to look at a case where there's been unimaginable harm and then decide what accountability, justice, and punishment are appropriate to request. What will serve the best interests of public safety. Every day, prosecutors in this state are permitted in this country in, and in the country to do that job. At least they were as long as they were throwing the book at everyone. Even some who were innocent even when they threw children in prison at alarming rates, no one intervened. Even as evidence mounted that long prison sentences did not help people change their ways when they were eventually released. It wasn't until voters started electing prosecutors who said they would consider that mounting evidence and who said, maybe we should think about doing things differently. If what we've been doing hasn't been best for public safety, maybe we should think about doing something else. It wasn't until voters started electing prosecutors who promised to follow research and evidence about what works best for safety and rehabilitation that some decided to start to intervene. Now, when we see reform prosecutors elected, other elected officials have decided that we cannot use our discretion and make these very hard decisions. That is what the Attorney General and the Governor have done in this case. Their behavior is undemocratic and they found themselves in very poor company. Florida Republicans, both then Governor Rick Scott and Governor Ron DeSantis have removed cases and prosecutors from office because they did not agree with local prosecutors' exercise of discretion, including one prosecutor's decision not to use the death penalty. Missouri Republicans are trying to remove Kim Gardner, 
for the same reason. Texas, Georgia, and Mississippi Republicans are all trying to pass laws that give them more power to move, remove democratically elected prosecutors over their decision making. And now Minnesota Democrats, the governor and the attorney general, are following in their footsteps. This governor and this attorney general are doing exactly, precisely what their opponents in the last election promised they would do. The governor and the attorney general are doing what Scott Jensen and Jim Schultz promised they would do if elected. I am keeping a promise they are not. They may disagree with my decision in this case, and it was a terribly difficult decision. They are entitled to their opinion, but their actions here show that they also don't really believe fully in democracy because they are stopping me from doing the job voters elected me to do. Only very recently, by the way, because they don't like this particular outcome. That is unacceptable. They have set a very dangerous precedent. You did. Are you for questions today? Yes. yes. What, what precedents are you setting for the community and for murderers? What precedent are you setting? Two years. Two years. Two years what, what are you setting? What tone are you setting? What we have done in my three months here is to look at each individual case. We look at the circumstances of each youth and adult, frankly, and we see whether there are opportunities to rehabilitate this person, depending on what their history is, depending on the circumstances of the case. In this particular case, we felt that at the 15-year-old uh, was capable of rehabilitation, at least to the best of our understanding of the research and brain development and the lack of history. And so we made an offer to him that he accepted, by the way, that he would spend time in the adult prison. Or what's your point of doing this? How is that safer for the What you have done is let a sex offender go and a murderer against women. Is there something against you, you, women that you, you don't charge the passenger but not a driver? You're, you're How does that kid is not that a sex offender that's not president president for the, the you, you asked me murder. you asked me what precedent I set for the community? Oh, wrong, the wrong one. That's well, it's to be here. Let's see if the community agrees. It's to be you. it's to be here. Let's see if that creating you space for you, the community, to uh, elaborate. But Mary, we don't yes. want criminals. Yes. 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 Does, does this development, does it phase you? Does it change how you handle cases like this that will come moving forward? So I want to emphasize again that we have looked at each individual cases. And since I've been in office, we have made decisions on hundreds of cases. The men and women in our office do this work every day. We have sent many people to prison, as you know. But we will continue to look at each individual case to make the best decision through a lens of public safety to decide what we think will hold somebody accountable um, and create the space for potential rehabilitation. So my anticipation is we will go ahead and continue to do what I was elected to do, what I made very clear uh, that I would do when I was elected into office. Ms. Um, Morgan, I I can yes. I think you. in talking to some folks, it's, it, there's a lot of questions of why they both got the same, same lead deal. Case by How case. do you not see That's the cases as different, given one pulled one the trigger and one did not? Yes. So we, as I said, we look at each and every case individually. These, the 15-year-old's case is not public. And so no one but the people in our office understand uh, anything really about this particular 15-year-old. They don't understand anything about the psychological background. They don't understand the history. The attorney general and the government don't understand that. So what we, what we do, what we're trying to do 
is look at each individual. And I'd say about the 17-year-old this. Probation did a, proba a certification study on him. They recommended extended juvenile jurisdiction. When the judge laid out the factors uh, that she would have considered, she said um, that the factors weighed towards giving him EJJ, which because is extended juvenile jurisdiction. So we did exactly what, what the judge would have done. How would you feel as to the fifth, as to the fifteen-year-old, all 16, of the he's sixteen. He was fifteen at the time this happened. As to the fifteen-year-old, that is a non-presumptive certification case. We took into consideration every all of the information that we had, including the fact that he was manipulated by an adult, whom we are prosecuting. Uh, aggressively, or we would have prosecuted aggressively had the case not been taken away from us. But why doesn't the fact that he pulled the trigger five times, why is that, does why that not that weigh that in not for a different amount of time? Why so the same plea offered is what we don't understand. The, so the, 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 so, that so science tells us, research tells us, the that the act certainly makes a difference in terms of how people feel about the action of the youth. In terms of science, the actual pulling of the trigger or not doesn't uh, reflect on that youth's ability to be rehabilitated. The science is very clear on that, and I know people struggle with if that. Science is not they the law, think, we're talking about they the law. think, Can you repeat about the law. Yeah. They what think, they for executing somebody and shooting them five times, law, shooting her in the head, right. shooting her in the chest. Five times. What's the law for that? Not the science. I'm not sure if I answered your question. <laughs> well, you never can. And I understand you always that you're going up in science. I guess my okay. question is, does punishment at all come into Call this into the for, yeah. for killing somebody? Yeah. Uh, no, thank you for that question. <laughs> Our system has been premised on punishment for decades. We are a very vengeful society and community, and we've focused on punishment. And we've punished many in our community, including kids, by sending them to prison for extremely long periods of time. In this case, we know very well that hasn't kept us safer. Look at what's going on in our community. And unfortunately, Zaria wasn't safe either. Yeah. And you guys Do you think your children are being safe around him? Do you think your children are Around him? I want to respect, I do respect um, your feelings, your anger about this. I'm trying to answer questions as best I can, so I would just ask you to respect my opportunity to answer questions that other people have. I think everyone Mary, realizes under your that theory, juvenile under, under your theory. Under, I can't, I'm hearing, I... Go ahead, sorry. I think there's an understanding amongst most that juvenile justice reform is certainly important and needs to happen but it, it seems and i understand where you're coming from but it seems like can't that be in conjunction with a with a punishment for a crime we're, we're talking what's important here is accountability what we strive to do is accountability in each and every case accountability does sometimes mean incarceration it does mean incarceration for the 15 year old in a juvenile prison it also means a lengthy adult sentence hanging over his head, and if he didn't follow that, he would be subject to going to adult prison uh, for a very long time. The issue way? here, and we don't have this case anymore, but the issue here is this. We could send this 15-year-old to prison. He would get out uh, in his early 30s. Wonderful. We know, we know um, from research and all of the people if you talk to who've gone to prison, he would be incredibly traumatized and come out more likely to commit violence. He would be more of a danger to the community. So what we are trying to do is to make sure that there is accountability for him and make sure that he doesn't engage in that same behavior again. Because what we've done, what my predecessor would have done, would be to put him in prison for a period of time. Likely, he would come out more dangerous to the community. That is not we true, are trying that to address that. I was in prison. Yes. I was in Texas. Attorney General Ellison and you.
go back a ways. You considered him a friend. He campaigned and endorsed you. Where does your relationship with him and your office's relationship with the Attorney General's office go from here Thank after what has support. to be, uh, you have to be offended by, on a personal level, by, by Ellison? My personal thoughts are really irrelevant because I was elected by the people in Hennepin County to work with all justice partners. We will continue to do that. When there are opportunities to partner with the Attorney General's office, we will do that. The GOP in Texas are, are targeting what they call progressive prosecutors. Yes. And they're trying to have them removed. There's yes. like 100 who have signed on to uh, abortion and they're being yes. targeted by the GOP. Does this feel anything similar to that? It does. It does because it doesn't really matter the decision, right? The voters elected me and other prosecutors. There are actually 87 elected prosecutors in Minnesota, Serve right? All of us. right. When, us. when each, all of us. each prosecutor that was elected was elected by their community. And in this particular case, I was office. elected by a We're large. Yeah, I, I was elected by a large margin here by the people in Hennepin County. Certainly there were people who did not support me or uh, vote for me, but a large percentage of the voters did. I ran, I ran on reform. That's what I was widely elected to do. And what, and I, I should swing back to too, the Minnesota County Attorneys Association voted unanimously to urge the attorney general not to ask the governor to give him the case. The Minnesota County Attorneys Association urged the governor yesterday not to take this case. And here's why. Because we now have one county attorney for the entire state of Minnesota. That means if you live in Brown County, if you live in St. Louis County, if anyone is upset with a particular prosecutor's decision, they will now go to the attorney general or the governor and ask for intervention. That's not true. Excuse me, excuse me. Everybody can't talk at the same time, but I am going to ask a follow-up question if everybody don't mind. Those county attorneys unanimously voted, as she said, for the, count, for the attorney general and, and um, the governor to not intervene, but what they did not say is that they agree with her, with her on this case and how it was being handled. So I'd ask you, clear. I would ask you to ask me a question. I was actually I'll have a question for you because I already okay. know I'm against what you're saying. No, then let, I was I was I was actually at the the meeting where the county attorneys association voted on this. What I think is really important is that we talk about facts. That we talk is about it, facts. Is it, yes. Is it true, is it true uh, that the certification the study thing? for the shooter came back that he should be tried as an adult? Yes. The, the yes. Fifth, yes. yes. Don't lie. Don't lie. Yes, don't lie today. Don't lie today. It's non-public information because yes, he is a 15 year old. I cannot comment on that because it's non-public information. Mary, can I ask you an intelligent question? Can I ask you an intelligent question, please? Okay, that's the end of that interview. Going with this BS, I hope they don't have kids. Hope y'all don't have kids.